Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're back here with Transport Fever and the fourth in my Get to Know series. And, well, it's going to be a bit of a mixed one, this one. Oh my goodness. No, I need to stop this. I need to stop this. We now have planes. But that, that little Junkers F-13 costs a mere two and a half million and change to purchase. I'm probably not going to be buying many of those in the immediate short term. Okay, anyway, getting into today's episode. First off, you may notice funky new buses, actually real buses, um, with um, people sat on top as well. And that made $652. That's lovely. Uh, what is this bus? It's a Gaganal C40, whatever that is. Yep, we have expanded a little bit. It's been about four or five years since you were last with me. And we are, in fact, now in January 1920. We have a very healthy bank balance of 408, nearly $409,000. All the while I've been expanding. That's what I've been doing in this last few years. I've wanted to do something big-ish, but never had quite enough money. And there's two ways of sort of dealing with getting money here. One is to sort of keep on expanding as you can afford it and bring money in that way by having exciting new routes. And I did some of that. I added a passenger route uh, from Shanghai to Phnom Penh. Again, using the destinations overlay to check that people wanted to go between those two cities. Uh, there was a blue line up here before I put my lovely vehicles on it. Uh, and also checking in here the destinations for each city to see where do people want to go. People did want to go to Shanghai. Uh, even a few from Riyadh wanted to go up there. And here in Shanghai there were people wanting to go to Phnom Penh and Riyadh. Ooh, there's quite a few people wanting to go to Riyadh now. That's lovely. I'm dealing with 85% of that demand. That is impressive. Um, also, oh, keep that up. Um, there are people who want to go to Taichung. There's, that looks like a good starting position, actually. 20, 28 people want to go to shop and work. And likewise, from Taichung, people want to go come back to Shanghai. Um, they also want to go to... There's a, there's a few that would like to go to Riyadh. But uh, not that many. So I could have added in another sort of intercity bus route there. But I've not done that because I want to do something else for this particular episode. But before we start that, um, a quick look at the finances. Uh, once again, um, we've had a few very successful years. Now, because uh, I have a couple of quite long... Uh, road routes, particularly this cargo chain, the stone quarry, all the way down by road vehicle to the Conmat plant and then into Riyadh to deliver the construction materials. That takes a while, so that it, as you can see here, the road profit sort of up, has an oscillation to it. It sort of goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, but it's always positive, but sometimes much more than other times. And that I think is largely due to the length of that route. Now, what, since you were last with me, I have upgraded those little vehicles that we had running uh, running stone and construction materials uh, between uh, Shanghai and uh, Phnom Penh, Riyadh. Uh, the initial vehicle carried six and travelled at a meagre 12 miles an hour. Now, this vehicle travels at a top speed of 25. Uh, so that enables me to deliver a lot more cargo between those two cities. One interesting thing on the replacement of vehicles is you can do it in, in a couple of places. Uh, you could go to an individual vehicle and say configure it, which actually takes you to the list of all vehicles on that line. But that one vehicle is selected. Uh, if you leave them all empty, it does by default mean set the line or clone or replace all vehicles. You could likewise just click at the top of the column there. I mean, this, this is very much typical table operation. If you're familiar with spreadsheets and stuff with tables in, you know how this sort of thing works. So empty or full, uh, if it's all selected the same, it means all vehicles, or you could pick one or two um, to work on. So two vehicles selected there. 
and that would replace just those selected vehicles. Now, when you replace a vehicle, you decide what you, what you want to replace it with, and it gives you a replacement price here, which you can just about make out in very faint sort of purpley red on that blue background. Um, so I can easily afford that now. Um, but what it does is when you replace the vehicle, it does it immediately on the road. So uh, for those of those players who like realism in their transport games, I'm afraid this is taking it one step beyond what Transport Fever did, where the vehicles would wait until they actually got to a stop before they changed, before they were replaced. In Transport Fever 2, they are replaced instantly, immediately on the road, wherever they are. Their, ca their cargo, passengers or freight, remains intact, so they don't lose any of that. Now, to be fair though, I've not replaced a vehicle with one of a lower capacity, so I'm not sure what would happen <laughs> if I had, say, six passengers on a bus and then replaced it with one that only had four seats it could carry four passengers. I'm not sure what would happen to those, those two extras. Interesting question. We may discover that at some point. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Um, it, it, other than that, it just costs money, just like it does in the previous games. Um, now, to expand all that, to put those new vehicles in, to expand the bus, bus routes to Shanghai, I did have to take out some more money from the loan. I had to take out another 500,000, in fact, um, of loan to, to, to pay for that. So my tax bill, my loan interest, went up quite considerably uh, since that time. Now, you may recall in the last episode when we had a sort of broader look at the finances tab, I said the interest charges here are going back to the mechanism we had in Train Fever, the first of these games from Urban Games. Uh, where the interest was charged every month as opposed to transport fever where it was charged once a year so you had a whole year to pay it off so we're going back now to that mechanism in train fever where if as i was doing here i had a couple of very profitable years at the moment i got to more than five hundred thousand in my bank balance i paid off that chunk of loan so that i would be charged less interest for the remaining months of the year. So if you're not planning on actually building anything or buying new vehicles for the next few months or whatever, then by all means pay the loan off as soon as you can. It does mean obviously keeping a closer eye on the bank balance and just keeping an eye on this bottom left corner or having this tab up, this box up, which is a bit silly really. Uh, and as soon as you get a 500,000, repay that loan and that will reduce your interest. So I've actually repaid a fair bit, well, a million now in, in all so I'm down to four and a half million in loan. Uh, now I'm going to have to take out for what I want to do in this episode um, I'm gonna to have to take that million out again but it means I haven't wasted money on interest when I didn't need all that money in the bank balance so don't let money go to waste spend it or give it back. Uh, final thing before we get into the main thrust th before we get into the main thrust of this episode um, I think it was G. George mentioned on the last episode, the, the comments for this, when I talked about the headquarters. I've gone and built it. I have my secluded little island here. You know, my own lovely, bright, sandy beach. Lovely bit of woodland around me, and I've built a headquarters. Now, the headquarters is very low level. I've got a company score of zero. I'm not quite sure how this increments, but we hopefully will see that as we play the game through. And if I remember correctly, we did see this headquarters develop in one of the videos that Urban Games produced for us um, in the sort of run up to the release of the game. And it does actually say on that little tiny sign there, it does actually say Ajax Post Transport. You can just about make it out, I hope. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing this develop into a fabulous haven, luxurious villa on my own private island. Anyway, let's get into what we're doing in this episode. What I want to do is show off mixing and matching cargo and passengers in the same um, stop. Now, we could do it in a bus stop but I don't think that will work terribly well. So we're going to do it in rail. And I'm doing it in rail for a couple of reasons. One of which is, as I said in the earlier episodes, I would like to get my construction materials here 
delivered to Tehran, which also requires them, by boat. So rather than having trucks or rail going around that, I would love to have a cargo route across the bay to deliver those construction materials to Tehran, which means I'm going to have to have a link to a dock down here somewhere. And one way of doing that is to have a little train station in the way. So what we're going to do is going to have a train station here picking up the cargo, the construction materials for, uh, for Riyadh and delivering them to this station here, which is currently just a passenger station. So we're going to be mixing and matching all these things up. Um, you may notice a little thing I've changed here. I've actually changed the, the track of the road um, because, well, actually I'm not sure there's a terribly good reason for doing that. <laughs> it just looks neater, I think, taking it there. I just wanted more space between my uh, depots here, my, my, uh, my stops here, uh, and the rail line. Right, so let's get into it. Let's build us a cargo station. So there's our cargo station there. Now we're going to be running a track which runs into this station. Now ideally I don't want it crossing the route of my passenger, passenger train here. Now at the moment the passenger train is coming into this platform on the city side as it were. Uh, so I think I'd rather have that train coming into this other platform here and change this first platform into cargo. And yeah, we may need to jigger about with the platforms as well, I think, on here. We will see that when we get into it. Okay, so first off, let's get that uh, terminals. Let's move that across to Terminal 2. Now, one thing that did occur to me, if you may remember when we first looked at um, the modular stations, one of the things we can add to it is the, um, is the underpass, the sort of steps down so people can, can track can, can walk between platforms underneath the actual track. You don't want them actually walking across the track. I thought we might need that here, but we don't, because I, I did notice, and I've got a closer look, there is already um, the, the, the stairwell here, which allows passengers to travel between the two platforms. So that's fine, so we can move the platform no problem at all. And uh, let's actually configure this thing. So what we're going to do, oh we've got containerys now, wow, does that, does that mean, I don't think we've got electric train, trains just yet, have we, surely. Okay, cargo platform, we could stick that on there, but I think I'd rather bring it closer into the, the station building itself actually, but we're going to need to get rid of that road I think, definitely. And we're probably going to lose that those passenger steps we had in there as well. Um, so don't delete it. That's the last thing you want to do. Uh, let's configure this. So to get rid of an element of a station, one of the modules, we can just delete those steps. Two hundred and fifty-five dollars. That's not too expensive. Uh, and we can. Oh, we're not charged for getting rid of a platform. Oh, that's nice. Okay. What did I do just then? Oh, I didn't. I did delete it. Oh, I delete. Ah, I deleted the, ah, the the canopy. Okay, I actually want to delete that bit of platform as well. I think. Yes. And we will replace that with a cargo platform. Just slip that in there. And in there, and down there as well, I think. But we're going. It looks like we're going to have issues with the track here, so we need to get rid of some of this. We need to get rid of that switch, I think. Just double check that our line. Yeah, it can cross over there. That's fine. So let's put in a bit more of this cargo platform. Uh, not cargo building, cargo platform. Okay, that's fine, I think. Going in there. Uh, the track we've already got. Actually, I'm just wondering if that rail there counts as track for the, for the station. I have a suspicion it won't. 
Yeah, I don't think it will. Let's let's take that out. So what happens if I configure this station now? No, I can't put that in. Okay, yeah, the, <laughs> the length of station track is obviously longer than uh, than that little bit of track we took out. So let's take you out as well. Let's get some track back in there. Ah, uh, yes, you see they've got the highlight there, so it's connecting to that platform and connecting off the other side as well. That's excellent. But we're going to need to... Did I? Oh, for goodness sake. What Did I actually do that? No, that is track. That is track. For some reason, <laughs> because it was highlighted, I thought it was just uh, extra platform, but uh, it's not. It's not at all. So can I put a little bit of track in there? It doesn't look like I can. So I'm going to have to get rid of that. Not Gutenrid. We're not doing that just yet. Uh, this is more expensive than I planned it to be. Okay, let's get rid of some more of this stuff. We want to get rid of that as well. do is we will extend this track out here a little bit. Put the switch in there for our passenger line. Okay, that's got rid of the flashing exclamation, the warning sign which you may have spotted at the top there. Okay, so we've now got a cargo platform on our Riyadh passenger station, but that's that's okay, but that station doesn't cover much of the uh, where's the, the the land use doesn't cover much of the industrial or commercial area. So if we click on station, yeah, you can see these dark grey lines along the road, and they also, if you keep an eye, the the dark grey of the buildings as well. Yeah, it takes it turns that yellow base to to grey. So it's not covering much of our range, so we're going to need a truck stop here attached to the cargo station to uh, to actually take those goods away from here. Oh, we've got new bus stops. Cool. Uh, okay, so how are we going to fit this in here? Right, that connects fine there. Just about to see the there was, honestly, Gov, there was definitely. I thought I saw a blue connector between the cargo platform and the cargo stop. Apparently not. I was obviously mistaken. We don't actually need two truck stops in there, so which. Uh, if we get rid of the left one, uh, let's get rid of them. There we go, that's better. Okay, and if we put that in, now I think what I'm thinking is we might actually need a building here on the cargo platform. So let's do that before we put our truck stop in. I oh, don't need that. I'm configuring the station. So we need cargo buildings. Aha! So we've got this little one here. They're, they're, they, can, they seem to be a little bit fiddly as to where they go down. Okay, right, now you see that little road symbol on there. Can I? There you go. Uh, you can see where it's connecting to the, to the platform and also outside. So presumably that is one of the connecting points. In fact, if you look at... If you look just to the right of that, you see the connector going through the passenger building onto the road. So it looks like that is where the connection is made. I can't put it there. I can put, put it 
can we put a bigger building there? So that's a small main building with street access. This is a small side building. Oh, that, that, is, oh, that is tiny, isn't it, actually? That might do the trick. If we put that along here. Which that I, this this one's a bit better because it's smaller, it doesn't extend so far out. So let's try that one, shall we? Okay. Now, when we create our truck stop, ah, there you are. You see, we do have that blue connector between the truck stop and the uh, and the cargo platform. That will work. And that's nicely lined up. Can I sort of straighten it so it's all it's about perfectly parallel? It probably never will be. Okay, that looks excellent. So we now have on our passenger station in Riyadh, we have a cargo platform with red signs as opposed to the white signs for the passengers with a cargo handling building attached to the platform and a connecting ramp to our actual cargo stop. Excellent. This might have been better actually if it had been the other way round. It's too late now, it's in place. Right. Now what we need to do then is put in the rest of the track <laughs> to go from our cargo stop here. and make this operational. So we've got cargo coming in from here. We've got a passenger train going in along there. That is most excellent. We need that double slipped, of course so that we can get our new train out of the depot onto the correct cargo platform side. Okay, good job. Right, now this is where we're going to need money. If we just check how much these trains are going to be, we're going to buy a vehicle. We don't need, we don't want it to be fast and expensive. There's no, that one's, that one's slower. But it's, a, it's twice as expensive. <laughs> Uh, presumably because it is considerably more powerful. It's twice as powerful, basically. And how many cargo wagons do we want? We can have a box car. Um, the box car carries those types of freight, but we need something which carries construction material, which is the side stakes. They are the same price and cost per day, or per year, rather. So that's fine. So we'll, uh, they carry seven. One, two, we'll probably just want two of those for the moment. And we can replace that if we need to when the capacity goes up. That's 1.3. Okay, so if I get... Ooh, I'm going to need 1,500. Oh, it's one and a half million in loan for this, I think, aren't I? Let's set our route up. Okay, so we've got that little route there. So that's going to be our train line and we're also going to need a new route from this truck stop here to our truck drop-off point there. Okay, right, uh, so we don't, at the moment I actually, so one of, the, one of the things I changed here as well on this stone supply, you may recall um, the line went into Riyadh and then went all the way back up to to Shanghai to, to, the, to the quarry but then I realized that Shanghai on the way back also wanted construction materials so the trucks actually make two two delivery stops as it were they they pick they deliver stone pick up Conmat for Riyadh come back to the Conmat factory and take any construction materials back up to Shanghai and then go on to the stonework. So that they were traveling the shortest possible distance empty, basically, that, that was the trick there. Okay, uh, I also rerouted them just to avoid too much collision with uh, other vehicles or getting in each other's way. So, in fact, the lorries 
won't go into Riyadh at all. So we can take out that stop. We can take out uh, that stop. So they're just going to be picking up any Conmat required by Shanghai. That's fine. And the train will take Conmat into Riyadh for us. Okay, I think that works. We may have more vehicles on there than we need, but uh, we'll worry about that when we get this set up. Okay, let's get some loan. There we go. And we're going to buy our vehicles. We'll buy that. Add it to the combat line for Riyadh. And we need some trucks here for this last leg of the delivery. So where's our depot? There we go. Cargo trucks. Uh, we've got the little one there, which goes 12 miles an hour. We've got the Benz. I, again, I think we'll use the little one. That I mean that carries sit. That's fine. We'll take how many of those can we afford? Well, quite a few still. Three will do. Let's try three. We'll sign those to the local delivery. Okay, let's run this and see how well that does. Okay, there it is. It's picked up its first load of construction materials. Just three. That's fine. So should we follow him into into the uh, station? Our uh, mixed up cargo passenger station. I'm not sure if this is new. I don't remember noticing it in Transport Fever, but I'm getting sunlight reflected off the rails, which I think is new. Which is a lovely visual improvement, a lovely visual effect. There he is. Let's get out of there. Let's just see how he... 8,000 just for delivering that. That is excellent. And that's delivered automatically to our station there. Also, I'm not quite sure why he stopped there. Uh, unless... Oh, it's this train is... Ah, right. Yep. He's coming in on that line. Uh, you shouldn't do that. You should not be doing that. There we are. I need to get rid of that. That's a signalling issue. We could... We could allow him to do that. Yeah, we could actually. We'll, we'll just put a signal in there. Actually, what we'll do, we'll put the signal... No, we'll, we'll leave it like that, I think, and that should deal with that issue. Oh, he's picked up 12 already there. Excellent. Okay, we're still getting some taken back to Shanghai. Yep, that's fine. It looks like these, these Benz trucks are really quite efficient. They're costly, but because they travel so relatively fast, we're making profit. And how are we doing so far this year? Yeah, our railroad is losing a hand over fist, but... <laughs> 34, 35 grand for that one full delivery. Okay, so that's it. That's really all I wanted to show you in this episode. Taking my time getting there, but I think it was worth it. So this is, is my first example of a mixed use passenger and cargo station. Oh, for some, it looks like they're the passengers that's actually stood on the cargo platform, but they're not. That's just the icons. So there we are. We When you have a, a cargo platform, you do need a building attached to it uh, to sort of connect it with any truck stop or indeed any dock, as I may well connect down here, or airport, or whatever. So you'll need some building to connect the various t vehicle types between the, 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 the transport, the vehicle type that you've got. So between train stations and truck stops, you'll need this connecting building. 
uh, whatever it might be. So that's it. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this and it has been helpful and useful to you in showing off one of the new features of Transport Fever 2. If you've enjoyed this, a like would be very much appreciated. Just click on that thumbs up button. That'd be great. Even better, though, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions, recommendations, criticisms, ideas, anything you fancy seeing me showing you how to get to know in Transport Fever 2, just drop it out into the comments box below. That would be much appreciated. It'd be great to hear from you. And, of course, if you've not already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. And that way, you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Transport Fever 2, bye-bye for now. There's a person walking along. Well, I never. I'm not sure the authorities would be happy about that. That's a health and safety hazard, surely. Anyway, we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.